Looked in the closet, searched high and low Time's running out, I gotta go Before the rodeo, I won't fret Got my boots in my hat, I'm not done yet Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G27 and welcome to the episode. And this episode is going to be a belated Halloween special as we're going to be using the Porsche 911 Turbo 1981 at Tokyo Expressway. So in this episode, I'll be covering on how to get the car, how to obtain the special Halloween livery, and mainly also show you guys the parts you need from car customization, the build, setup, and most importantly the gameplay race just to have an idea what the car is capable of doing. So, without no further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the episode. So, in order to find the car, uh, you can find it right now for limited time at the used car dealership. So, we just do just go to the used car dealership or scroll down. It's going to be within the between the Civia K Aero and the 308 GTB Ferrari. Overall, very decently good, good car. I have driven this car in the past a couple times. At Tokyo Expressway, very affordable, 220,000 credits. Overall, decently good stats. It is a rear-wheel drive drivetrain with decent torque, about 303 pounds of torque. The weight is 2,100 pounds, 295 for the horsepower. But since the point is within the low 500 point range, that's going to allow us to really be able to put some parts into the car, so that way it'll be competitive at Tokyo Expressway. So mainly, if you want to sell a car get some easy cash like that or if you want to do a race at Le Mans or Spa you know one of the main big main grand races that you should easily obtain enough credits to get both the parts from tuning shop and car customization and most importantly the car and trust me this car looks very iconic with that lovely uh, 911 look so that is how you get the car from the used car dealership once you get this car, what you're going to do next is let's go ahead and get our livery. So if you guys want to follow me in the game, my personal GT7 profile is JeffreyGT97YT. And if you want to follow me through the game, just search JeffreyGT97 at the showcase menu and look up for either my styles I do share, my liveries, or race photos I do share. But let's say if you haven't followed me in the game and you're still uh, or look, want to l have delivery, here it is right here. It's this Halloween special livery by Happy. And I would say this livery actually looks pretty good on this car. Now you see there's no hashtags on the car. You don't have to worry about it. Just so, so search the word Halloween and this car should be like the first car you see in the main menu. And you can also see that this car is in fact a standard body kit so if you have a wide body kit car just buy you a new car make sure it's stock body kit and that way you'll be able to add delivery in your car so once you get your livery done let's say if you don't want you want this livery but you want the parts that's totally fine let's go ahead and get that now the oz racing oz italia 150 is going to be the choice of rims just keep their thing as is check okay custom parts the front is going to be type B, the side is going to be type B as well. Uh, we are going to add a rear diffuser to the back of this car, so it's going to be type A as well. And for the rear wing, it's going to be type B. So I did make some little minor adjustments compared to the delivery. And the last but not least, there is a roll cage option, but there's no roll cage in the car. And that's going to be it for the build. So let's go ahead now and check out the tune itself for this race. So for the first step, of course, it's going to be your tire compound. It's going to be our trusty Sport Hard tire compound. That's the tires we'll be using for this race. As you can see, the suspension, you're going to keep it stocked. Uh, there's no need to really buy one for this particular build. For differential, it's going to be fully customized. As you see, we got 5 for torque, 15 for acceleration, and 20 for braking. Moving on to the aerodynamics, the front of the car is going to be 50, so make sure it has the lowest point value for your front downforce for the rear downforce as you can see it's 200 it's going to be mediocre 200 uh, so you're not going to do what we've been doing lower front and then highest rear so it's going to be a little surprising to see that I actually have it three fourths quarter way through you do need to purchase ballast and you can see it's going to be 83 that way you're going to add some weight to the car 
And once you do that, uh, you're, you're going to go ahead and put all that weight, you're going to shift it all the way toward the front of the car. That way it's going to help the car be more stable, have more of a balanced steer. 87 for the power restrictor, fully customized manual transmission at 340. High RPM turbocharger, racing intercooler, and of course the intake and the exhaust categories as you can all see there that's all set to racing. Racing brake system and racing brake pads. Racing clutch and flywheel, and you can see the certain parts we have for both engine tuning and for uh, the body work is supposed to need as well. And that's going to be it for the build. So, a quick up summary of the car itself. The car speed overall, I'll give it a solid 8. Uh, it's going to be overall the fourth fastest car within the group of this race. So, decent speed, not the best, but it does have some speed showing in the race. Handling, I'm going to easily put this possibly at 9.5 to 10. It depends of how much of a fan you are with this build. The car did feel really smooth over on the race, but you will have to worry about a little bit of a slight oversteer uh, when the rear tires do begin to wear off. Tire life, I'm going to put it automatically to a 10 as well. Uh, the tires do held up very nicely. Fuel management, I'm going to put that at a solid 8.5 as well. Uh, the lap for you to pit for fuel only should be around lap 8. Acceleration is going to be another crucial thing, and for Porsches are really known for acceleration it's going to be an all mac 10 as well so overall a really solid pick of a car uh, despite not having the best speed uh, the handling the acceleration and of course most importantly the fuel and tire life should make up for the difference so as we get started with this race and our lovely looking halloween car as we get through the end of the tunnel we're not making any spots just yet but we actually will pick up a couple spots as we get out to the main track as you see, we're just getting spots slowly but surely. It's going to be quite a journey for us to make our way to the front. The speed, we're going to be right close to 180, or right at it, once we hit our first breaking point. As we're outside the top 10 at P11. But you'll see here, as we get to this corner, the Jaguar does go a bit deep into the corner. We're going to take advantage of it. Get ourselves P10. You can just see this car is so smooth. I mean, the car itself felt really smooth. I do personally drive on controller. So if you're driving on the wheel, it should feel very smoothly, hopefully, um, it will. And not to mention, before I forget, but the AI is set on hard mode in this race. So as we make our way to the second overpass, we're going to be side by side with the green Mercedes-Benz GTR. We actually make some slight contact, but we do manage to get ourselves over the uh, Mercedes-Benz and put ourselves to P8 as we are behind the newer uh, Toyota Supra. Now you can see the main group of drivers like the older Impreza, the older Supra, the RX-7 Rear the GTR, and the other 911 Porsche. They basically have gone away uh, from a pretty good distance between ourselves and this other group as we're going to get ourselves P7 and just look how close this is. We're just barely just getting in front of the Supra. I was, didn't even imagine we were that close to the front bumper of the Supra, so we got, got very lucky there. But as we make our way through the first lap, not too terribly too bad. Wish we were kind of closer toward the front of the field. Uh, because trust me, this car does in fact feel decently good for handling. It's just the fact that the car doesn't really have that much speed compared to the rest of the drivers. It's quite a little bit annoying. As we make our way through the first lap though, you can see there's the, the first group right in front of us. But we will eventually catch up with the first group very soon uh, once we get into lap 2. But for our first lap overall, not too bad. I mean, I wish it was a bit better overall. For our very first lap, overall time is going to be a 223.7, so a little bit slower than we're, what we're used to, but, you know, we're trying to make the most out of this car. And I think we are, in fact, catching with the newer 911 and the older Supra as well, as we're just cracked into the low 180s for our, our main speed. So we actually do have decent speed. So I, I think our the best car we can compare our speed to would possibly be the RX-7 Rio Mera. And we're in the march between our speed and the RX-7 is very, very, very close. Uh, but the RX-7 does have a little bit of an edge over us when it comes to speed, unfortunately. But like I said, the handling of this car is really, really good. As we're catching with the newer 911, we're going to really try to send it in this corner. We can't do it just yet as it such, such a door on us. We're going to go for a crossover right here. Uh, can't do it just yet, so we have to rely on this next breaking point. And we still can't make a move, we're trying to make a move right here. And then we're going to do another, you know, 
cross over, but still can't get this job done. So we had to rely on Sector 2, which is our best sector in this track. The car does grip very nicely as we're going to try to make a move or force ourselves into right there to its left side, and it does work out nicely as we get P6 line right in front of that Porsche. And while we're at it, we're going to go for a two for one combo, put our nose right beside the older Supra, and still can't get the job done just yet, but we're going to rely on this next apex. As you can see, we almost rent that almost full throttle the whole entire apex car sounds a good exit but still didn't work so we had to rely on this next breaking point and surprisingly the supra breaks very early we actually had to avoid the supra and we thankfully we didn't get t-boned by the other porsche but it was kind of weird that that happened that the older supra just braked very very early into that breaking point which is very odd but we do manage to move in the top five uh we're gonna fast forward later into this run Later on lap 5, here we are in the battle with our extended rear mirror. We get ourselves a good bite out of the apex, and we're going to allow ourselves to be side by side with the rear mirror. As you can see, it's very close racing, and we both have very similar speed. As we hit this breaking point, we're in the bad as the rear mirror has the preferred line. We're going to break early, though, and make good use for that apex, and just like that, we're going to recapture P3 for a nice cheeky move. We're going to be side by side, but we do have the preferred line as we get out the corner and get ourselves into P3 at the end of lap 5. So, speaking of lap 5, this is going to be also the program lap of the NSX to take its pit stop, and as you guys can see, the GTR is now our new race leader, and let me say, both the NSX and the GTR, they were basically in their own little world. As you can see, the GTR did a 208, which is very quick overall for this track, but for lap 6, this is going to be a hot lap for the race, I'll let you guys watch the rest of this clip, and then I'll wait and see you guys when we get to our one and only pit stop. So as we finish our lap, we did 209.8, which I thought was pretty doable. It's a decently good lap time around this track. Uh, may not be a lap time that you're aiming for on hard mode, but this might be a really good card to use on easy or normal mode. But as we get to our pit stop on lap 8, uh, as you can see, the tires are still, in fact, in decently good shape. So all we'll be doing here is getting fuel, and I'm basically am going to easily put this fuel right at the halfway mark that's going to be the mark you're going to be aiming for Are you sure you could probably go put right where that diamond is but i think it'd be better just put halfway through that way you have somewhat of assurance extra for fuel so as we get our pits up done just do a cute couple more practice laps around the track and that's going to be it for our run so overall car was great uh may not be the fastest car that we have ever did as we did a 26 43 overall for this race which is you know it's not too bad 
uh, but like I said, there's other cars out there that can really outperform this car. So 2643 is what we were able to do, and of course, like I mentioned before, the GTR was on a whole different level. Uh, just did a 208.8 .8 for SFS Slop a lot 3. Yeah, GTR, NSX, they were just about side by side, but because of how things went for them, like for paying for fuel, that's why the rear was able to overtake them. So, we got ourselves the standard bonus since we make some contact, and that's going to be it for the episode. And now, here is the next episode, and this actually is a special request episode. So, I actually have a buddy, a friend of mine, who actually, if you guys don't know him, he did a pretty cool tune using the Mercedes Benz CLK GTLM, the other, I think it was like last month or two months ago, he shared me his tune, I shared that tune. Well, he's gave me another tune to try out, and it's going to be using the Porsche 91117. So in this next episode, I'll be covering on how to get the car, explain, you know, the two ways to get it, or maybe three ways, I'm not too sure. But this is going to be quite an interesting car. As you guys can see, it does have an understeer as we easily got passed by the GTR. But I'm going to try my best to see what I can do with this machine and give you guys the full guideline of what to expect from this car. But hopefully, you guys have a great rest of the day, or night around at me. And I'll see you guys later. Take care. And if you guys managed to miss the last episode I did covered using the Audi V8 V10, you can click on the video right where it shows up on the screen. And if you guys want to check out my TikTok as well, as I do hot laps around the track as well, you're more welcome to check that out too, which hopefully does be a big help. And with that all being said, hopefully everyone here has a great rest of the day, night, and weekend. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.